All right, so a new film today, guys. I want to have a look here. I purchased this truck at RC Four Wheel Drive. You guys may or may not know of this company. Most people in the scale world know of RC Four Wheel Drive, as well as in many other areas of the hobby. This is the one tenth scale uh, Desert Runner. This says on the box that it's the RTR, but I actually got, as you can see there, uh, the kit version, which is the almost ready to run. It's not a kit; it's already put together. Uh, I'm not sure why they put kit but it's definitely uh, an almost ready to run. What I notice on the box is it does have different options for colors. Uh, when I purchased mine the only one uh, that was available was black. So this gives me hope that there might be new colors here in the upcoming future for other people that are interested in this. Uh, and as you can see there this truck comes with remote locking diffs which is pretty cool. Uh, not the first truck we've seen with this but to have a super scale truck, look at this. Here it is. This is the beautiful Ford Raptor. Now there are things I love about it and there are some things that I wish would have been paid more attention. Um, and I'll start off by saying the truck overall is very nice, but when I opened mine up it was almost like I don't think I got a used version, but there is fingerprints all over it. Um, and the inside mirror was um, broken off the rear view mirror as well as you can see when they had done the gluing or whatever they actually let me focus on this for you you got a little bit of cracking along the top not actual cracks but like in the paint is is kind of it's almost like they used a ca glue or something like that and it kind of gave me a little bit of rippling plus my windshield came fairly scratched up now that's that's basically where the end of my complaints came because overall this vehicle looks very very awesome check this feature out you've never seen before an opening hard body door Full interior on the inside, so this is very neat. I wonder if my Mini-Me action figure can fit in here. Um, so the door handle actually does slide back and forth to latch that door. It's not a very smooth closing of the door, as you can see, but it does close, and when it latches, it's done. Coming around to the back, let's look in the box. This was very interesting because when I unboxed it myself, this piece was out, and it was actually showing me the battery compartment, I believe. Look at this. There's a la clasp on the inside. You can actually just squeeze these together. The latch opens. Closing this up. Looks like there are light pods. There are no lights as far as I know. I like the dual exhaust on the back of this. This is the first vehicle RT RTR I've seen that comes with it. Also, it came with a hitch, so this is nice to see. We can now like tow around our, our trailers uh, and don't have to seek out a separate winch. No uh, Ford uh, licensing, I'm assuming, so the hero it is. And of course, coming around to these tires, these are nice and soft. This has a really nice, good rubber compound to it, um, which means I'm gonna get probably quite a bit of traction, but again, a super scale tire. And just for giggles, I'm gonna show you guys, let me camera focus there. Let's look at the clearance of this vehicle. Almost, well, about an inch and a half, hey? Would you say that, inch and a half? So this vehicle overall is much small, smaller than I thought it would be. It's quite, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice truck. It's a super scale truck, of course, but coming in at just about eight inches tall uh, with a very low amount of clearance means that when you're out on the trails, uh, you're gonna be taking it super slow. You're gonna be picking the uh, lowest lines and uh, sometimes the most challenging. In fact, there's tons and tons of uh, competitions out there that are uh, arising more and more for these super scale trucks. And I think it's definitely something that I want to explore as well. So I'm going to be installing today the motor, the uh, ESC, the servo, the uh, receiver. Check out this little guy. This is my uh, Noble 4 uh, radio right here from Flysky, the NB4. Here is one of the smallest receivers I have ever seen, FGR4S. This binds with the Noble, the MB4, and look at this, four channel receiver, very small, and also sideways loading. So now you can plug the servos in sideways. You don't have to have them jutting up off the board. So a very small footprint. I'm looking forward to this because being a tiny truck like this, I'm thinking I'm gonna need a small receiver. Uh, and uh, 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 this is the MB4 right here. I do have a video that covers everything about this already. Welcome to Noble. Nice. 
You guys may have seen my uh, unboxing video on this where we go through all of the different features that this has, including this awesome additional battery pack on the bottom which increases this uh, uh, runtime on the radio to 10 hours. Um, so that's a, a, an additional 10 hours, which is crazy. For those of you wondering size difference, here is a modified CCO1 that I did that basically was a 1 12th scale body, uh, fit on there very nice. Here is the 1 10th scale, and of course over is the Traction Hobby 1 8th scale. So this kind of gives you a good idea of what we're looking at when we uh, have all three trucks side by side. On the Ford that I had built, you can see I did have uh, those D-rings on the front underneath the bumper, but nothing like uh, this one. This one actually has metal D-rings on the bumper to help pull you through the muck. Great skid plate on the front as well. Um, but no place, of course, for a winch. Any Raptor doesn't come with a winch out of the gate. Uh, normally, you'd have to add an aftermarket style of bumper. I don't know what this is made up of yet because I haven't explored it. But I really like the fact uh, that someone finally came out with an independent front suspension for their truck. You know, not the first, of course, but this one here for a scale truck in a Raptor is really neat. I had the same idea uh, back in the day. And hence you can see here, independent front suspension. Now, why did I like this? Well, it's sure made for some great shots and realistic driving when I'm, when I'm filming these trucks. Of course, you come scooting around the corner and the truck is just, the, the suspension looks ace, right? It's exactly how it's supposed to be. So it's gonna be this screw that I remove on both sides of the truck. And then there's another screw right here. One here and then one on the other side. That should lift the cab right off. I put in a 2.5 mil here, backing it off. So I have to pull it forward. Pulling it forward seemed to help. I'm going around the interior system right now. There we go. Yes, yeah, so what was happening is it was nice getting caught on this inside door jams or this door hinge. So it's quite large, which is good because it's not going to be breaking anytime soon, but that explains what I have to move out and around this dash. Super close up of the interior now. Not only can you take your best buddy, but you can take a whole crew to work with you. Very good. So there's the battery tray. There is the pinion hole to go into uh, the gear. So the motor is going to mount up right here. The servo is going to go here for the steering. And what servo am I going to use today? Check it out, guys. Uh, this is an MKS, the HBL 550 servo. This has a ton of torque, guys. Way overkill for this build. Uh, but being a beautiful black aluminum servo uh, that has ultra torque, why not throw it into a super cool all black truck, right? I've been saving this one for a special occasion, and I think this one can be it. So MK, uh, MKS servos, I've uh, been using these guys for a while now. I've been testing them. Uh, they don't say waterproof on the box, but I have tested these things over and over in the water. I haven't had an issue with them at all yet. Four more long button head screws allow me to remove the entire interior out of the way. So a nice aluminum motor mount you can see right there. Aluminum transfer case. Very nice. It is mounted up on that uh, plastic piece right here. This is all plastic, but this is aluminum. Feels like metal drive shafts. Definitely aluminum right there, and I love this. This is so nice to see. Independent front suspension. I don't know if these resis work, um, so I'm not gonna say either way right now. It is such a smooth suspension. Really small transfer tube, so I'm not sure. Um, but overall, the look of it is spot on for the Raptor. To simplify things, I can show you that just on the inside of the interior, there is a small area where an ESC can fit right up onto this tray. Uh, so today I'm gonna to be using the Tekken FXR uh, ESC. Normally I use um, uh, Hobby Wing products because they have some great ESCs that are very cost effective, uh, but tried, tested, and true, and I had one in my drawer. In fact, this is the last one I have. Uh, I've been keeping it for a special occasion as well. So a nice build on this truck with a lot of pieces that I think uh, will come together nicely. I'm gonna run these wires underneath the interior setup to go back to the battery, and of course shorten up these cables so it can hook up into the motor.
Okay, here is my MKS servo. This is going to fit upside down with the horn on this side. I love that they actually supply them with black wires so you don't have to see servo wires or white and red and black running through the trucks. Okay, so right now I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about this motor mount right here. I'm actually going to be removing this just by removing all these little screws that you can see I've backed out all but this one right down here. This kit, or RT almost ready to run version, came with two screws to mount up the motor right here already. So what I have to do is remove this, mount up the motor, and then put this back in place with the drive shaft that goes from here to here. This is not the transmission I'm used to seeing. Wow, look at the planetary gears in there. And that's what that looks like. But one of the issues I noticed, you'll notice that I've got a Tekken 30 wound uh, brushed motor in there instead of the uh, Traxxas one, was that the Traxxas uh, actual motor shaft that came out for the pinion, the pinion shaft was too long. And so it was causing a binding issue in these planetary gears because I had to cinch it all together again. And then of course nothing would turn. Okay, I flipped over the truck and I'm just putting in the uh, servo saver and the horn for the um, locking differentials. Okay, I'm just removing the front skid plate. Oh, that is a very thin piece of plastic. It looks aluminum, but it's actually a plastic. And then I can get in here to the uh, throw arm and then screw it into the servo that I have already installed on the flip side. Okay, just putting the, th the screw through the uh, servo saver and to the other side. Beautiful. There is my steering servo. You can now see my motor. The transmission has been set up. Drive shaft, of course, connecting. And then here is that remote locking diff servo. Okay, one last thing before I close everything up here. Have a look at this Fly Sky receiver again. This thing is so small, and I wonder how many of you guys noticed that there was no uh, antenna, no antenna tube. Look at the size of my thumbnail. Look at the size of this receiver. It basically disappears right behind my thumb. And about 20 minutes later, I've got everything lined up where I'd like it to be. You can actually see I left the receiver on the outside of the truck. The reason I did this was simply for ease of access. Um, I can still use the programming features back there on the ESC, even though you can't see it, I can reach them. Uh, and the wiring overall is very neat and tidy. I've mounted the on and off switch right above uh, the uh, shock mount, of course, right here. This is easy, it doesn't really move, and it's out of the way of the suspension movement. So that's good. And so now I can go ahead and uh, basically put the body back on. I was going to install a sound kit from Sense Innovations. I may still do this depending on um, time, but this video has been long enough already and it looks like I don't have too much room. In fact, I'd have to mount the sound kit back here. All right, so Mini-Me is in there. There's my one-tenth scale driver. He does fit, just barely, but does fit. Here's the on-off switch right in here. Everything is rocking, ready to go. My Noble, ah, oh, looks like I could turn down the servo speed a little bit. I'm really disappointed we can't open up the hood. I hope in future versions of this we could open up the hood and have a look inside. That way we could see the FlySky receiver, the really nice motor we put in, and access the ESC. But again, it's just four simple screws. So one on this side, one on this side, and then two when the doors are open. And that removes the top cab. Let's listen to this roll around a little bit. Boy, oh boy, that looks like a real truck if I've ever seen one. Nice steering throw. Right on. And then of course, let's back it up a little bit here. Yeah, definitely need some lights. Now, when I talk about steering speed, I, you know, I put in a fairly fast servo in there and there's no way a scale or full size 
uh, truck steers that quickly. So what I'm gonna do is a lot of radios like my Noble here offer the ability to go ahead and do um, steering speed, which basically, if you can focus in on here, there you go, the turning speed, you can actually turn that way down. So I'm just gonna do that now. Watch this, when I turn it down to 22 or to 20, watch. I could do this as fast as I wanted, but the servo is getting a slower signal. So now if I have a really hard time with uh, steering control, like if I was someone that had that problem and I couldn't just turn slowly, I could turn it and look at this, very precision steering now. So that's definitely a help, something I look for in my radios. And this is a fairly cost-effective radio as well, right? There's lots of options on it, and you can find this for about 200 bucks or less, depending on where you look for it. Even though I can change this at any time, just with reprogramming by my buttons, my auxiliary channel, um, I've caught the locking differentials on my trigger right here, just off to the side. So if I hold it in, it goes into a locked differential four-wheel drive, but as soon as I let it go, it goes away to a two-wheel drive, which is more efficient for turning, of course, and more efficient for power consumption. Now, I could change it just to where I was just clicking a switch like that, and it would switch my diffs on or off. It really does come down to what you prefer for driving style. Of course, this truck offering so much to those that are looking for a super scale truck. Uh, this is an area of the hobby that's rapidly expanding and has been for a while. I think RC four-wheel drive is good to get in on something like this. Glad to see another one because I've had my other Ford truck uh, for many years and I often wondered why they hadn't come out with a super scale one. But here we go, guys. You're looking at it now. Hopefully you've enjoyed the show today. Hopefully you're inspired to get outside and have a good time with RC. Of course, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I want to go out and give this a, a good rip around and... You know, what do I always say? Until next time, guys, get outside and have some fun with RC. You know I always do. Bye. <laughs> Woohoo!